Hi there, I just want to thank you and honor you for your heart to love God and love people. I'm truly amazed at how the gospel is expressed in your life as you faithfully make disciples in whatever season that we are in. And so we hope that this series of online Victory Group materials or resources would be of great benefit for you, helping you to become more effective and efficient in leading your respective Victory Groups. To know more about how to use this material, you can go to this link or you can go to the description box below so that you will be acquainted with how to use this material. Now may God bless you. May the Holy Spirit empower you as you lead in this season. Today's material, I want to talk to you about reasons for participating in evangelism or the apostolic mandate, or reasons in participating in the Great Commission. Number one, message to be shared. Luke chapter 24, verse 46 and 47. He told them, this is what is written, that Christ will suffer and raise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in the name of in, in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. In other words, we have a good message. In fact, not only that we have a good message, we in fact have the best message. About Eureka, the best message ever. We have the most important message that the world needs to hear. It's a message that presents the solution to our ultimate problem. Ano nga ba ang ultimate problem natin? Our separation from God and the consequences of sin. And that is death. Luke 24 verse 46. Christ suffered and rose from the dead. He told them, this is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 to 5. For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. Jesus did not have to die on the cross because he was innocent. We were the ones who should suffer substitution. Because of his great love, we became the, he became the sacrifice. He took our place, in other words. He took our sins and gave us his righteousness. He became the curse and we received his blessing. May naalala po akong uh, couple married for a couple of years. Uh, and they began uh, having more than the usual discipline. They wanted to make their marriage work, so they agreed on an idea that the wife had. For one month, ang ginawa po nila, they planned to drop a slip in a fault box. Fault, F-A-U-L-T, fault box. The boxes would provide a place to let the other know about their daily irritations. The wife was diligent in her efforts and in approach. Uh, mong isara yung uh, jar, iniwan mo yung basang tuwalya sa banyo, yung mga sapatos mo, nakakalat palagi, at marami pang iba. Uh, on and on until the end of the month, ginawa po yun ng wife. After dinner, at the end of the month, or after, at, after dinner, at the end of that month, they, uh, they exchanged boxes. The husband, on the other hand, reflected on what he had done wrong. At dahil doon, uh, then the wife, when the wife opened her box and began reading, they were all the same. The message on each slip, yung sinarang sulat po ng asawang lalaki, I love you. Yun po yung mga nilagay ng asawang lalaki sa box for the way. This basically speaks of God's love for us. The Bible says, love covers a multitude of sins. The love of, uh, uh, the love of God is able to cover and wash 
away every sin that we have committed and will ever commit. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow's sin. This is the good news. Just as if you and I never sin. Luke 24, verse 47, Repentance and forgiveness of sins, the Bible says, will be preached in His name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Acts 2, 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Like two sides of the coin, the preaching of the gospel message includes not only what Christ has done on the cross, but also includes the person's response as well, or our response as well. We must recognize that sin separates us from God, and therefore we must turn away from Him. We used to run away from God, now we must turn and walk with Him. Then we receive His forgiveness, which He lavish, lavish on those who believe. Not only that there is a message to be shared, number two, message messengers to be sent what good is there what good is there in the greatest message kung wala nga namang messenger who will go and proclaim it is such a great privilege to be sent by the lord to tell of it, of this greatest news according to the statistics between 75 to 90 percent of christians actually come to christ through a friend or a relative, or basically from someone na kakilala nila. John 20, 21, we have been given authority. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. This is an amazing passage because the Lord sends us with authority. And this authority, He likened it to the same authority that God the Father has given Him when he was sent on the earth. Imagine that kind of authority that we have, that you and I have today. Uh, I remember when I was a student, a freshman student, I got saved 91. I was not sent, I was kicked out. I, I'm also grateful to the kind of training that we used to do. Na para mang tinutulak na lang. <laughs> Sinasamak na lang. We used to like, just look for mga uh, uh, classrooms without teachers. We, we come in there mga 10, 15 minutes earlier. Tapos may mga students na nag So we do open air teaching. But more than the idea of being pushed, I believe we, you know, God has anointed us with, with the power of His Holy Spirit and not according to our own abilities. Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This authority includes the power to accomplish His will, the Bible says. We will not just go and rely on our own abilities, mga discantation natin, to fulfill His mission. He will empower us to become not just witnesses, but to become effective witnesses. Of his gospel. Witness is basically someone who does the truth or to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Your testimony is your unique contribution to the gospel. Hindi lang tayo binabigyan ng authority, we are also guided by his presence. Matthew 20 and 20, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely the Bible says, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The Lord also promised that His presence will be with us, not just sometimes, not just one time, but always as we obey Him and advance His kingdom on this earth, on our own worlds, and even in our workplaces. Through the Holy Spirit, He, has, he guides us into all truth and continuously help us, helps us in bringing the message to the world. Uh, there was a one-legged school teacher from Scotland uh, came to uh, J. Hudson Taylor to offer himself to serve or to be to be a missionary in China. Uh, sabi po doon, with only one leg, why do you think uh, why do you think of going as a missionary? Asked Hudson Taylor. 
sabi po niya, I don't see those with two legs. Ay, sorry. I don't see those with two legs going, replied George Scott. And guess what? He was accepted to go in the mission field. Number three, and finally, mankind to be saved. God has called us, Matthew 28, 19, to go therefore and make disciples of all nations. The Lord loves the whole of mankind, period. He not only saves us, but also calls us to a life of discipleship. It is a life of learning, training, maturing, growing, and also multiplying. He commands us to go, leave our comfort zones, call others to follow him, and train them to grow, to, to grow and mature. Mankind to be saved, we are called to make disciples. God has also called us to reach nations. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all of creation. Mark 16, 15. God had the whole world in mind when he gave us the Great Commission. It is not just about our race or one race, not just about our nation or one nation. It is about the nations of the world. He wants a big family consisting of Asians, Africans, Americans, Europeans, etc., etc. This is why uh, you know, we have Mission Sunday every month. And I want to I wanna challenge everybody in, uh, with the online platform, with our virtual platforms. God has truly opened doors. Uh, I mean, literally open nations' doors, lives of people from different parts of the world. Pastor Dan would always uh, share with me a story mga kaibigan niya sa iba't ibang bansa. Yung mga taong never mo maimbita dati sa Bible study or one-to-one -one or a small group, you will find these people so open, not just of the virtual uh, platforms, but because of the season. I believe God has given us this open door for us to see not just the pandemic, but for us to see a big, huge, wide open door for the gospel to be preached. So, Filippo, we have a saying, and it's a serious saying, that every Christian seriously must have a Bible and a passport. The Bible is essential if we are serious about knowing God. The passport is essential if we are serious about obeying the Great Commission. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed this session.